Uh, hi everyone, my name is Janis Slezins. I'm board certified neurosurgeon practicing here in Riga, Latvia, and I want to answer a very commonly asked question regarding uh, disc herniations. So it's generally known that disc herniations can reabsorb and the fact that they can reabsorb also means that there are situations when they don't reabsorb and on the example of this today's operation i want to explain this question so today we operated on a young woman with a large disc herniation and the fact that we operated on her uh, almost automatically means that this was the case when uh, disc herniation did not reabsorb and uh, if that would be the case we wouldn't be operating on her why such some disc herniations absorb and why some of them do not uh, let, let's take one step back and discuss what the disc herniation actually is disc herniation is a situation when outer layer of the disc ruptures and inside part of the discs through that rupture migrates out and if it presses on the nerve root it causes symptoms symptoms in case of lumbar spine since lumbar nerves are leaving lumbar spine and, and uh, going to leg so the pressure on the nerve root causes leg pain sometimes also numbness and weakness and there are quite commonly seen disc herniations that are not actually pressing on any nerve roots and they are not causing any symptoms therefore they do not require any treatment however quite often uh, patients come to me uh, with only complaint that there is a disc herniation visible on the scan otherwise they are not having any healthcare issues whatsoever and I need to explain that the disc herniation itself is not cannot be considered as a disease disc herniation becomes a disease when it is actually pressing on the nerve roots and causes symptoms and if that's the case then it may require treatment so back to the main question why some of the disc herniations absorb why some of them don't it depends from the obstacle if this part that has been herniated have a blood supply or it does not have blood supply uh, by meaning blood supply i mean blood vessel that is carrying blood to the tissue and by carrying blood it also carries oxygen and nutrients which feed the cells in the disc herniation so if there is some blood vessel that has been has stayed with the this herniation it will provide nutrients and oxygen and this kind of this herniation will not likely will not reabsorb and vice versa if this herniation has not any blood supply these uh, cells which are inside the disc herniation will die of hunger let's say because they will not receive any uh, nutrients and oxygen and they will die and reabsorb actually this herniation reabsorbable of this herniation is nothing uh, else than uh, death of the tissue of the cells which are inside the disc herniation and reabsorption of these cells so uh, we also need to apply some time frame which is extremely important uh, in what time this herniation should reabsorb sometimes uh, patients come to me after one year they are already one year with the symptoms one year uh, feeling pain and they ask me maybe this herniation will reabsorb of course obviously that is not the situation because it is known that this herniation should reabsorb within six to eight weeks from initiating of the symptoms so it's very important to understand how long patient has symptoms for example if there is someone coming to my clinic with symptoms for three four months already i immediately understand he or she is likely to be a surgical candidate and vice versa if there is someone 
in my clinic and saying, oh, doctor, I am having symptoms only for a week, I already immediately understand that we have five to seven more weeks to give time for reabsorption to happen. And from the statistics, we know that it happens in 60 to 70 percent of the cases. So as a summary, disc herniations can reabsorb. It is statistically about 60 to 70 percent of the cases that reabsorb. And it depends from if this herniation has or has not blood supply. If it has blood supply, it will likely not reabsorb and vice versa. And reabsorption should happen within six to eight weeks. That means person that has developed symptoms three days ago or just very recently has a high potential of disc reabsorption and getting back to normal without surgery and vice versa. If there is a patient who is having symptoms for months or even years, it's extremely unlikely that he or she will improve without surgery. These are purely surgical cases. Thank you for your attention. My name is Janis Lezins. I'm board certified neurosurgeon practicing in Riga, Latvia. Please hit the like and subscribe to our channel. Here we discuss uh, many questions around neurosurgery and spinal surgery, and we try to answer questions and address issues that are raised by our patients. Mm -hmm.